is a MAN Smart Drive Alternator. It's a Smart Drive washing machine motor stator modified by Bob Mann at Treetop Windmills. He added heavy duty rotor, heavy duty bearings, and neo magnets. The alternator isn't too hard to turn by hand, but does have a little bit of cogging. If you give it a spin uh, and let go, it does stop on its own pretty quickly. One nice feature about this alt is that it produces a little more than a volt per RPM. It does have a resistance of 21 ohms, but if you do the math, at 120 RPM it can put 160 watts into a load. This is a 12 volt halogen light bulb. I'm going to use it as my test load. If you put 12 volts across the bulb, it consumes 50 watts of power. I'm going to hook this light bulb directly across the output of the alternator, give it a crank and see if I can get it to light. The alternator is extremely hard to turn and cranking as hard as I can this is at the only speed I could get up to. If you look at the meter, I don't even reach a volt. Why is this? It turns out that this is an extreme example of the load and the alternator being mismatched. We can do some math and calculate that if we have a 50 watt bulb that runs off 12 volts, we would need about 4.1 amp, amps going through it. For that same amount of current, we can calculate the power loss in the stator using I squared R and find that it would be 364 watts lost in the stator. So for me to light that bulb to full brightness, I would need to put in 364 plus 50 watts equals 414 watts of cranking power. I can't get anywhere near that. This is a board I've been designing over the last few years and finally built this past year. It's a microcontroller based turbine controller. It does peak power tracking and has a very high efficiency uh, switching power supply that converts high voltage input to a lower voltage output but higher current. Besides being a turbine controller, this board has been designed to be a scientific instrument for characterizing wind turbines. It has the ability to measure both voltage and current in and out, has an anemometer input for wind speed, and also can measure turbine RPMs. This board is extremely customizable and because of that there are three components I've left off the board that are attached externally. That's an inductor and two capacitors and the reason I did that is those components would be drastically different if you were going to push kilowatts through it versus if you only had a couple hundred watts going through it. Let's see what my board can do for this alternator load mismatch problem. What I'm going to do this time is run the alternator output into the input of the board and the output of the board to the light bulb. Now the alternator is much easier to turn and as the board tracks on my cranking speed, power starts to go to the light bulb. The light is lit with much less effort than before because the system is more efficient. Now what I've done is cut my cranking speed by about 30%, simulating a drop in wind speed. First thing the controller does is remove the load from the turbine so the turbine is installed. And it will eventually track down to the new cranking speed and start with drawing power from the uh, alternator again. For this prototype and this demonstration, I've deliberately slowed the control loop down so that it takes some time to track the uh, change in speed. For a wind turbine, this would happen much faster. Here we're drawing uh, power from this new speed. It's requiring more torque because power is related to torque times speed and if we don't have the speed you take more torque. And it is getting the power out. Here I'm trying a different type of load. It's a low cost GTI that you can buy off of eBay. These uh, grid tie inverters do attempt to do peak power tracking but they usually do a very lousy job with wind turbines because they're designed for solar cells. My board has also been programmed not to exceed the maximum input voltage of this grid tie inverter, which is 60 volts. 
if uh, the output starts going above 60 volts, it will cut the power so that it does not burn out the grid tie inverter. You might wonder why even though I'm cranking over 60 RPM, I'm only getting about 15 watts into the grid. Well, the reason is, first of all, the grid tie inverter consumes about 10 watts, so I'm putting 25 watts into the grid tie inverter. The second reason is my arm is tired, and my board is actually doing exactly what it's supposed to. It's peak power tracking my cranking, and it's finding out that it, it tries to draw more power than I can produce. The power actually goes down, and this is the optimum power that it can draw out of my arm. The firmware I'm using in this board today is uh, really crude and it's literally something I threw together just to test the, the hardware on the board. I'll be making major improvements over the next few months. Um, I am very excited to see what this board will do in the future. I think it has much potential. Thanks for watching.